So this week, uh, Phil Spencer sat down with Kotaku uh, for an interview. And I thought like there was a lot of interesting revelations in this article. So we don't normally just bring up a specific article, but yeah, there's just a couple of things that they said, or he said that made me pause for thought and then also just like what it means for the generation. And it kind of also reflects on some of the stuff you've said in the past. Um, So some of the sort of like the big points, the first one that I was really surprised about that he actually, because, and and just one thing to be clear, like, because I've seen some people say some weird stuff around this. Phil Spencer cannot say things he doesn't have a reasonable ground to believe are true, right? Because he's, a executive vice president of a publicly listed company you can't just go out there and say stuff that could misinform the market you can't like legally do that so when people are saying oh he's only saying this for this and that no 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 like they need to be able to prove that there's a reason why he's saying these things and he believes them so the, the first one is that series s he expects to outsell series x i was like hmm really because i the initial pre-orders are way in favor of series x and Series S is still the only next-gen console you still can get. So you can still get one in Australia. In I believe even on launch, you can still get a Series S. And in the States, you still can pre-order it as well. So, like, do you think that's going to be right? Like, what, what, what did make you think when you heard that, Swinney? So he clarified that he thinks at launch, the Series X will, like, for the first initial period. Yeah, yeah so, so I should say over time. Over yeah, time. yeah. Um. Yeah, that whole reasonable grounds thing kind of puts a bit of doubt on my, what I'm about to say. But the, I wonder if this is a way to kind of prop the Series S up a bit by him trying to kind of say this. And I know this is one random interview. This isn't a press release or anything like that, you know. And he's probably yeah. like, he is probably not expecting this to go viral news because. Other than us talking about it, I haven't seen it be a headline or anything, um, like huge headline. Um, it's it's weird. I I doubt, doubt it myself, but I also have a way less knowledge about everything than he does about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and, yeah, it's interesting. And, and that that's the part, you know, because it, it he just can't say stuff like you can you can bend the truth and all this other kind of stuff you can say it in a way that is kind of like you go well that's a personal view or whatever right like there's legal ways to get around that but the way he sort of framed it was like kind of he he referred to we or like i think at one point he said model around some of the things that he was talking about and to me, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. And and just for context, I used to do like investment analysis. So like actually look at financial disclosures and what people say in companies and they have to say certain things. So then you can work out backwards. Like, what does that mean? How is that going to be achieved if you really believe that? So when he said this, because to me, gut feel, this seemed completely wrong. Like if the setting is 300 US dollars for a Series S, and then what is it? Four hundred US dollars for a PlayStation Five digital, and then five hundred US dollars for the Series X and the PS Five. That's my recollection. I think that's right. Is that right, Swinny? Mm, I'll run with it. Yeah, um, run run with it because I'm like I, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm pretty sure that's right. And I think it's like two hundred two fifty for a Switch in the states. Now, when he said this, I, I still don't believe it makes sense. Right. Like, I get there's a differential, but, you know, gaming, you know, people have been paying these $500 for these consoles, like, and that's fine. The only way it makes sense to me with what he's saying, and and I'm actually going to bring back something you said when this all came out, like maybe four or five podcasts ago. If I had a model and, and modeled it in, to me, it wouldn't map out. It wouldn't make sense. But if my model said, for Christmas 2021. And you got to remember like manufacturing will amp up and they'll have more consoles. Christmas 2021, we're going to do a $100 price cut on the Series S. Then it starts to be like, oh, hang on. You know, if, it, if it's like 300 Australian dollars, 200 US dollars, that's just a proposition for people who have a Switch who, you know, have a PS5 that just go, geez, like that's just so tantalizing 
And if they bundled that up with, hey, you get a year of Game Pass Ultimate or something like that, you know, it gets to a stage where you really do kind of go, it's almost an offer too good to refuse, you know, especially if it's your second console or something like that, or it's just a box to play, you know, X Cloud and all these type of things. And it kind of marries up to what you said, because I think if they did do like a hundred dollar price cut that aggressively, that early in the generation, economically, how do you make that work? And it goes to what you said, they're not selling an Xbox. They're selling Game Pass now. Mm. And you can see that with the numbers and the strategy that they're doing, the acquisitions. And I'm like, you know what, if they did that, and I don't think they're taking that much of a bath given the way that the Series S is built, and if they can ramp up the production of it, I'm starting to go, maybe that would actually work. And secondly, the Series S may outsell the Series X. I mean, if it's that much of a difference, you know, you look at it and you go, geez, like, you know, like, why would I not get it? You know, parents, they look at it, oh, if you get a second console for the kids because they're fighting, oh, it'll just pick up a Series S, you know? Like, what do you think of my crazy speculation? Yeah, look, I I think the retail bundles um, would how they package all that stuff is going to be key with this because, as you said, like your parents walk in, it's Christmas time, they go, "Oh, a kid wants an Xbox," or or what? A kid wants a console. At that point, the kids probably told them what they want. Let's let's not you know, <laughs> let's not kind of you know be ignorant of the fact that kids are always going to tell their parents which console they yeah. want. Yeah, parents um, don't always listen though. Yeah, but <laughs> it's like okay, you know, oh, oh they he wants an Xbox for Christmas. It, it it makes sense that you know if there's a bundle that says okay that yeah they get Game Pass for a year, maybe it's bundled in with um you know the the latest who knows maybe the latest bloody Bethesda game or something. Um, yeah. it's the the bundles are a key to this. I think um, it's almost like the Series X in the future could be like here is like the I'm trying to think of the right terms not hardcore or pro gamer but here's like the the person who wants the best, the top level, and he's the like enthusiast. the enthusiast, the yeah. And yeah. he here is the he's I guess the the regular Major Joe, games, the regular yeah. Joe console, you know. Um, I still would be surprised if it happens myself, but um, who knows? Like this, the, this is the first time that um, both you know we've we've had Sony and Microsoft release two very different consoles especially microsoft you know the sony difference is very minimal but um like these are two wildly different consoles you know we've had different and strategies yeah and we've had different um skews before when they launched with oh here's this one launched with xbox arcade version with the the main version but they're essentially still the same console this is like completely different so it's going to be really really interesting yeah and the other thing that supporting my crazy theory, because if they if they were going to do this, they would be planning it now, right? Is that in the Australian market, for whatever reason, they added essentially another 50 bucks onto the price of the Series S. Now, if you're setting a pricing strategy, and, and this is actually making me convinced that they're going to do this, man. In 18 months, they will drop the price of the Series S by like $100. The more I think about it, I'm like more convincing myself of this. So the way it works is you set your pricing strategy, but if you know that a setting like that is going to change, you need to be considerate of the factors, right? And one thing is, you know, FX fluctuations and things like that. If you're pricing it differently into other markets, you need to potentially even put a bit of a buffer in because you never know what's going to happen to different economies. And, you know, you're putting a price setting in that eventually you might not even be able to have a price drop in that other country because of the way that the currency is and they hedge it and everything, but it still has an impact. Given that they've got that extra 50 bucks, it sort of then kind of makes sense for the Australian context. It should have been priced at, uh, I think it was 450, but it was $500 Australian. Now that allows them to go, okay, well, you know, we're priced it at, you know, essentially 499. We can drop it to 399 in Australia within a year or 18 months. And as a pricing strategy, you'd set that at the start. So I'm going to keep my eye on this. I'm going to call this out if I am able to guess this. But um, I thought that was a really, really interesting part of the article. The other one was that I think more people picked up on uh, around the direct question was asked, hey, how, how are you going to make your recoup your investment? I think that's how it was framed in ZeniMax, Bethesda Studios, if 
Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield, all these games don't come to PS5. And he straight up just said, look, from our perspective, we've looked at the numbers and it will stack up even if we don't release it on PS5. Like that was super interesting to me. That to me indicates their own modeling of what's going to happen with Game Pass. It's just going to be like, they're going to be making bank through that. So then even more the lens of, you know, just getting people on Xbox as cheaply as possible or on PC is going to be the key to the strategy or getting it available on lots of different systems. And that kind of gets me to the last point around Nintendo. Now, Phil Spencer has been going out of control just celebrating Nintendo recently, like talking on and on about how good Animal Crossing is, how great Nintendo is, you know, allowing, you know, big Microsoft characters to be in Smash Brothers, like lots of things, right? And then in this article, they're sort of hinting at Game Pass coming to Switch. And he's very coy about it. He's sort of, you know, saying, yeah, I'd love to have it on, but at one point he was like, I think you need them to answer the question. And man, I'm starting to think, I think there's a real chance that Nintendo does do a deal with with Microsoft in some ways to get something like an xCloud onto the Switch and then have a revenue share deal or something along those lines. Because from a business sense, it makes a lot of sense with, you know, Xbox picks up a bunch of people, gets subscriptions... Microsoft's already shown a propensity to do revenue sharing deals. They've recently done a deal with GameSpot in America that if they sell subscriptions in store, GameSpot gets a cut of that profit permanently or for a timed period of time at least, like a trail. And yeah, I think like Nintendo, maybe they would, yeah, pick up, you know, 20% of of that revenue of Game Pass. uh, And then maybe they'll have some restrictions on how it would work, but that would be really interesting, man. Imagine like being able to play xCloud on your Switch. Well, like, that, that'd be cool. That, that's that been a rumor for a long time. I, I, know, I know. And if they, I mean, Nintendo doesn't allow it, but then allows a game like Pantsu Hunter on the <laughs> store. Or, oh my God, there's so many bad well, games. Like, that are just <laughs> like, how does nintendo of old would not allow this on what is going on um what, what's happening like and i know it's very different but um it's but it's not because of that it's not because of the adult nature they're not worried about that obviously. i know they're I worried just, about the business i, I know i just it. wanted to mention yeah. pantsy hunter Sorry. I just, anytime <laughs> i can i can bring up the fact that that's on nintendo eShop. i will um but yeah it's i it makes sense to me um what makes sense to me even more is that they um, just bring across more titles just natively, like rare rare replay and stuff we've talked about. Well, they've actually, like that was another part of the article, that they were sort of saying that they're going to start limiting that type of stuff. But rare replay out of every every single thing. I don't thing. think it's going to happen, no. Oh, so, I, look, he, he pretty much, if you read between the lines saying like, they want to stop doing that stuff. But to me, from a business perspective, I read it as we've played nice with Nintendo. We've shown what we can do. We want more of these games in the gamer's hands, but through Game Pass, through xCloud. Now, you know, if you want to have the rare replay, okay, you've got to do it through xCloud or Game Pass or whatever. And that's the gateway in. And given the new president of Nintendo, he seems much, much more willing to do deals like this. My gut feel is when they announce the Switch Pro next year, I wouldn't be shocked if part of the announcement is like a partnership with Microsoft to enable something like an X Cloud. And they'll do it in a way that protects Nintendo as they always want to do, but allows you to play even further sort of next gen titles on the Switch as long as as well with all the exclusives on the switch and that's a win-win for both parties i think microsoft would be more than happy to be making x amount of dollars per month for quote-unquote xbox gamers and they're just playing with a switch like they don't lose in that equation and nintendo doesn't really lose either because a lot of those titles aren't going to be coming out to nintendo anyway yeah it's it'll it's it's gonna be interesting to see where everything's at in five years. That's all. I'm oh about. yeah, yeah, yeah. I it it's super interesting. Hey, it's like I don't know. I love the business side of things, and it's like oh, really. 
<laughs> I couldn't tell. It's just, <laughs> but it's super fascinating because I don't think we've ever seen a generation where all three competitors have literally got different strategies. Like, it's crazy. It's like, I've never seen it. And I'm actually, I'm really impressed with Phil Spencer and the team. Like, because they're clear third and they, they have to do something completely different. And they've gone really hard in that direction. And people like me who are, you know, lapsed Xbox gamers, I'm like, eh. I keep looking at it and go, oh, you know, Game Pass, it's a pretty, pretty good deal. It's, it's going to get me. It's going to get me eventually, man. <laughs> and that's like an impressive thing about a business model. If eventually people just feel like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get on top of this. So, and, and um, maybe let's get into uh, other news just around availability of consoles. 